uh, on this seminar on political finance in Thailand. Uh, what a pleasure to see this room full on a Friday morning. So clearly, this issue matters to all of us. So on behalf of International IDEA, thank you very much for giving us your time and uh, contributing to this discussion. Uh, my name is Kushbu Agrawal, and I work at International Ideas headquarters in Stockholm. Uh, I particularly focus on the issue of money in politics, so it's a, such a pleasure to be able to be here and talk about the issues that I'm so passionate about. Um, I will be giving a presentation, but before that, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Lina Rikila Tamang, who is the Regional Director for Asia and the Pacific at International IDEA in our regional office in uh, Canberra, Australia. Just before Lina starts, I just want to say we have interpretation, so anybody who wants, please, uh, you can switch on your interpretation. Also, I have been requested by our interpreters for all the speakers to be, please, a bit slow, because they are doing simultaneous interpretation. Thank you. Oh. Uh, very good morning. Uh, welcome, and thank you so much for accepting our invitation to attend this seminar on political finance in, in Thailand. I know these are very busy days, weeks, months in, in Thai politics, um, as Thailand is yet again trying to form a new government, which is, as we all know, pro uh, proving uh, to be challenging given that the uh, current set of rules about decision making are separating uh, election results from government formation. So we appreciate much that you are taking this, this day to be with us uh, today. On what it comes to political finance regulations, as we know over the years, Thailand has made several uh, efforts to reform some key aspects of political finance system, including when it comes to regulations of political uh, funding for political parties and funding for election campaigns. Yet, several challenges remain that require improvements and innovation and appropriate systems and processes needs to be put in place for, to ensure enforcement. Inspiration uh, to this report really came about as we uh, gathered that there had not been really a very systematic review of the effectiveness of party finance regulations undertaken in Thailand. And we hope that this report is able to provide such a comprehensive analysis of the current political finance framework and also examining uh, the challenges of implementation. The report focuses on um, the, the kind of building blocks of political finance regulations, which are the public funding mechanisms, regulations on private funding, uh, regulations on spending, reporting and disclosure of income and expenditures, oversight mechanisms and sanctions. And based on these findings, the report provides some very concrete recommendations for consideration by policymakers, political parties, the Election Commission of Thailand, and, and anyone really interested in the topic and the public at large. Many of the, our intended uh, recipients of this report, you are, you are sitting here with us uh, today. And it is those recommendations, really, that we wish to discuss today with you all. We are keen to hear from you uh, which of the suggested recommendations are feasible, desirable, doable in the short or, or the long run. Like, for example, are the, are the sanctions in proportion to the crime? Uh, should the smaller parties uh, receive uh, more public funding than is the case today? Should the formula be changed? And would increasing uh, the spending limit to electoral campaigns encourage parties to be more transparent in their spending? And is there something missing uh, from the report that uh, should be there? And what needs to happen for the recommendations to be implemented and enforced? So I wish to thank uh, the lead author, uh, Punchada uh, Sirimunabut, for all the hard work 
divisions in, in writing this report. And also I want to thank my colleagues, uh, Kushbu Agraval, who is here, and Yukihiko Hamada, who is in Stockholm. They have really um, developed the, the global framework for the political finance regulation studies and worked closely with Punchada on this one and two. two. Uh, Kushbu will talk a little bit more about our global work in, in the next session and about the framework that we, we have been applying. And I also want to thank uh, my other colleague, Adi Aman, from our Asia and the Pacific team, who has really provided our valuable inputs and feedback on, on this report. And I also wish to thank all the participants who, who, who were there in the preceding expert validation uh, workshop that we organized here in, in Bangkok. And I hope that you can see that your inputs and suggestions are actually reflected in this final uh, version of, of the report. As mentioned, this, is a, this report is part of the larger International IDEA uh, initiative to review political finance systems in selected countries, really to advance evidence-based uh, global policy debate on, on money in politics. And in Asia and the Pacific region, we have made similar studies from Mongolia and Fiji, and are currently thinking through uh, which country in Asia Pacific we should uh, study next. And then the uh, second half of the day uh, is devoted to what we often call the weakest link in the political finance, which is to have exchanges, lessons, reflections, addressing the challenges brought about by digitalization, online campaigns, campaigning, and implications and consequences to integrity of political um, finance. So we are interested really hearing um, based on Thai experience in understanding the trends in this field, what is happening, um, identify some effective solutions and perhaps transferable practices. I think uh, Thailand is probably has many lessons that which are emerging and which may be of interest uh, elsewhere as well on what it comes to uh, regulating electoral campaign finance in the digital age. So once again, uh, thank you very much for providing your valuable time and being with us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lena, for your reflections. And uh, to do the honors, I would uh, request you to please uh, launch the report officially together with our lead author, Panchada. Just tear it apart, Punchada. Tear it apart. Thank you, Panjura. Thank you, Alina, also for your uh, reflections uh, on the on the sessions today and uh, uh, setting out the objectives uh, and the pathway. Um, so after Lena, uh, right now I will be presenting uh, a little bit about our work on the issue of money in politics in general, but also focus a little bit on why do we do these assessments, what the purpose is, and what do we intend to achieve uh, in the short and the long run by doing these assessments. Uh, I would like to request that my presentation be uh, projected on the screen. Yes. Um, I don't need to give an introduction of idea. I think almost everybody here uh, knows about our work. Uh, but very briefly, uh, we work on the um, issues of democracy and electoral assistance uh, broadly, but also our main thematic expertise lies on the issues of electoral processes, 
political participation and representation, um, assessment of democracy, uh, constitution building, etc. We do this work uh, from um, our headquarters in Stockholm, but also our regional and country offices across the world. Uh, we have more than 17 uh, physical offices in the world, but we also work on many other countries where we don't have offices. Uh, and uh, very, very grateful for uh, some of our member states who are uh, represented here today. Uh, we, uh, our members are the ones who give us the, the zeal and the courage to do the work that we do. Um, technology. Um, so Money in Politics program, uh, we are a small team of uh, three people, uh, full-time two people, who we, uh, we focus our work on basically larger political finance reforms uh, all across the world. Uh, we talk about uh, regulations of political finance, digital reporting and disclosure, uh, transparency of uh, funding of political parties, etc. Uh, and we do this work through three... Um, areas. First is the knowledge production. Um, we run a database, uh, and if I may say so, it's the uh, most exhaustive database on political finance regulations in the world, where we provide information on political finance regulations in 180 countries on the four pillars of uh, political finance, basically income, expenditures, uh, reporting, and oversight of uh, political finance. Um, we also produce knowledge, what you are seeing today, our reports, uh, but this is also just a drop in the bigger pond that we work on, uh, and we are continuously uh, thinking about issues that are uh, important for the um, regulations of political finance, and the issue of campaign finance, for instance, later in the day, you will hear a little bit about our work in that area as well. So always striving to make sure that uh, we are up to date and we are providing uh, cutting edge knowledge to our uh, boundary partners through this kind of research work. I can continue. Uh, we also provide advisory services to our boundary partners. It could be uh, parliaments, uh, oversight agencies, uh, political parties, civil society organizations um, on any political finance reform issues. So what Lena was mentioning, that we are uh, looking at what country we can move to next, but it's not just our agenda of where to move next. We are always uh, uh, looking at where the demand is, which country is uh, initiating the process of reform, and how can we bring our uh, knowledge to inspire any possible change in the country concerned. Uh, and we do this also through uh, creating forums and bringing together um, oversight agencies, political parties together and creating dialogues. And we do also this through um, bringing together different oversight agents from across the world and exchanging those knowledge and uh, uh, learning from each other. And finally, the global agenda setting. Um, as an intergovernmental organization uh, which, with a permanent uh, representative status at the UN and also affiliation with various EU agencies, we are part of global uh, network of uh, oversight agencies where we have been able to set agenda on the standards, best practices, what should political finance regulation look like, what is workable, what is achievable, what is doable. So we have also been able to create that kind of uh, network uh, with our partners. Um, Political finance challenges. Uh, so I must tell you that uh, of the 180 countries that we maintain on our database, almost every country has some sort of political finance regulation. Some are more robust than others. Uh, but even in the most uh, advanced societies where political finance is very well regulated, uh, there remains a number of challenges, including regulatory loopholes. And those, those loopholes can be in terms of... Uh, uh, the permissible sources of income for political parties or the limits that are being placed or spending limits are not clearly outlined, uh, etc. So despite the progress that is being made, uh, the challenges uh, continue to impact. Then there's the issue of weak implementation and monitoring. Uh, no matter how robust the regulations are, uh, the, the real essence lies in their enforcement. 
as it applies to any kind of regulation. And uh, our political finance assessment is actually a step towards uh, ensuring that implementation of those regulations is uh, in line with how it should be. Um, and finally, uh, changing landscape and evolving conditions. Uh, the other challenge is that uh, the field of political finance is everything but static. Uh, and again, uh, we will see later in the day about online campaign finance. Ten years back, we did not think about how the world of campaigning will change uh, so dramatically, uh, where political parties and candidates will, and other third parties will rely so much more on digital spaces to reach out to voters, or if cryptocurrencies will be used to donate money to political parties and candidates, etc. So there, there continues to be persistent challenges, and uh, there is a need to continue to innovate, to research, to uh, update ourselves, and uh, figure out what the solutions could be to these challenges. There was some problem with this. Um, anyways, the, my next uh, uh, slide was about political finance assessment itself. Uh, and why do we do it? Like me, Lena mentioned, we have conducted these assessments in uh, uh, several countries in the Asia Pacific, including in Mongolia and uh, uh, Fiji. So what is the purpose of this assessment? Uh, so it is in tune with the challenges I was mentioning. Uh, there are implementation challenges, there are regulatory loopholes which can be uh, abused by um, people who want to take advantage of the loopholes or the dynamics are constantly changing. So the idea of this assessment is to use the framework um, that IDEA has developed and really see how the entire framework is working. It's not just about the implementation of the regulations, but also about uh, the issues of capacity in the oversight agencies, uh, the issues of capacity of political parties, but also the willingness of political parties to uh, uh, follow the uh, guidelines or how much engagement there is from civil society organizations. Are, is there a room for their engagement? Uh, how open um, different partners are for change? Um, and I must uh, add to this that uh, it's not the first time we are doing this assessment. We are not the first institution who's doing this assessment. Uh, there are other institutions like Greco, uh, in Europe particularly. But the difference between those assessments and this, our assessment is that those are more focused on the regulatory side of it, but we look at the entire framework. And another thing about that is Greco is focused very much on um, European uh, countries, whereas we are focusing on countries that are not represented in those assessments in Asia, in Africa, uh, in, in the Pacific, and, but also in the Balkans, for instance. Um, just very quickly, um, uh, we did this assessment in uh, Mongolia, and we're very proud to say that uh, we don't want our assessment documents to just sit uh, on your table and rot. Uh, our idea is that those recommendations that we put forward are practical uh, and implementable. Uh, and in case of Mongolia, we did this exercise in a very, very interactive manner, in a very inclusive manner, uh, where we um, consulted the uh, agencies, political parties, and our recommendations were actually used and discussed in the parliament, and Mongolia recently passed their new legislation on political finance after a long, long debate and uh, discussion. And we're very proud to say that uh, some of the recommendations that we provide are actually reflected in, in the law. And also the state audit agency adopted a digital disclosure for reporting of political party financing, and that was also one of our recommendations on the report. So, so this is the primary purpose of our work, that our recommendations, which are really thought through and discussed with the different stakeholders, are taken on board by either change in regulation or uh, advocacy by civil society organizations or change of practices by political parties. Then we had also conducted another assessment in Fiji. Um, and in the uh, Fiji case, uh, no real regulatory change has happened, uh, but the reform debates are happening, and our assessment was really instrumental in creating those dialogues, um, not just among the oversight agency, but also among political parties and civil society organizations. And uh, again, we're very proud that uh, the uh, the supervisor of election, they have taken on board uh, the recommendations we have provided and they are going to use our recommendation to have uh, further engagement with political parties in the days to come. And we are hoping that uh, uh, whenever come the re uh, reform process begins, uh, some of our uh, recommendations will be considered uh, in the process. 
Um, in terms of Thailand, I will let Funchala do most of the talking, but uh, like Lina mentioned, the inspiration for Thailand assessment um, happened a, a year back uh, when uh, the discussions were happening and there were so many exciting things happening in Thailand and there was an appetite for a reform process. Um, the most of the research and analysis uh, for this uh, assessment was done in the quarter three and four of 2022. Uh, and uh, Punchira, of course, led the in-country research process. Uh, and we were engaged uh, from distance um, in some of those meetings. Uh, we did a validation uh, an experts meeting in quarter four of 2022. And some of you were present in that. So thank you again uh, for helping us uh, navigate the different challenges and dynamics of political finance in Thailand and uh, uh, helping us finalize this report. Uh, the production phase was um, in quarter one of 2023. Um, and Again, similar to what happened in Mongolia and Fiji, we are hoping that uh, the work that we have put, uh, our hearts that we have given to this report are actually eventually taken on board by uh, different stakeholders to initiate a discussion, a debate, and uh, identify what Thailand needs in the long run, short run, and how this report can uh, provide support. And it is not just about the report. Uh, our work is very holistic. Uh, so if there is any particular area that any of the boundary partners would like our support in, in terms of uh, technical support, advisory support, we stand ready as international idea. And uh, I would also like to just add that uh, this report is in no way critique of uh, what is happening in Thailand, and it cannot be a critique. Uh, like I mentioned, none of the political finance frameworks in the most advanced economies or most robust political finance systems, like even in the UK, they are not devoid of uh, you know, um, any sort of gaps or um, weaknesses. Um, but there is a need for constant innovation, constant improvement. What we hope is that uh, for money to play a very positive role in Thai politics, the recommendations will be taken on board uh, because we gave it in a very good spirit and we are hoping that our stakeholders will also imbibe it in a uh, in the same positive spirit. So this is from me. Uh, all our reports, our work on money and politics can be accessed through this link. Our website is currently in the process of renovation, but uh, everything is available online. can be downloaded for free, of course. Uh, but also, you can, uh, there's our contact uh, details on the website. So if you want to reach out to any of us, uh, we'll be very, very pleased to take this conversation forward. Uh, now, with this, I would like to invite um, our lead uh, author, Punchada Sirivunda Booth, to give a presentation on the findings, recommendations of the report. Um, uh, so a little bit about Punchura. She probably doesn't need introduction in this crowd, <laughs> but I'd like to uh, just highlight some of um, her illustrious career. Uh, she's an associate professor of political science in the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities at uh, Mahidol University. She's a recipient of uh, many fellowships and awards, and she's conducted research uh, in Southeast Asia, particularly in Thailand and Indonesia, which remains her uh, two countries of uh, deep interest and expertise. And in terms of thematic areas, uh, she focuses on the issues of uh, political parties, elections, and politics in both Thailand and Indonesia, but also in South Asia, Southeast Asia in general. So Punjala, the floor is yours. ค่ะก็ขอสวัสดีทุกท่านนะคะตอนแรกก็คิดอยู่ว่าจะพูดภาษาอะไรดีเค้าบอกว่าคนไทยเยอะก็ขออนุญาตปรับภาษาไทยต
So I've been working with many, many uh, political parties. I am providing a general overview and not go into the details because the details are already in the report. I would like, I want all of you to read. And all the recommendations for the election commission, I hope that you will take it up. I want to say that uh, I hope that the changes um, for the election commission is to provide recommendations to increase the money from 30 million to 34 million for support and also for personal usage. It's not actually a lot per party, but uh, I would recommend increase in those support. Can I have the next slide, please? The development of the uh, laws concerning financial um, support for uh, election has started since 2000 and uh, 1997. That was the first time in Thai history that um, there were provision of finance for the political parties. The main aim is to have uh, the businesses who are actually supporting the political parties to actually decrease their support and then to have public funding to support the political parties. But of course, this has not actually been happening. And this has followed on in 2007. Once we had the coup d'etat, there was a rewritten in the constitution, a new constitution was rewritten. But there were many changes, especially the calculation or the formula for calculation for the political parties. Actually, there are actually four parts in all this that they will be providing for the calculations in four components. First, the amount of um, seats that they would receive in each of the election area, and second, the amount of votes, and the main points that they will be receiving from um, uh, the branches, there are so many branches that have been set up. Many parties have never won the election, but they have 100 branches or 200 branches. Say the Democrat Party, they have almost 200 branches in the beginning, but they still work. But the, some small parties, I'm not going to mention their names, they have maybe 200 or 300 uh, branches, but finally they were not elected, which shows us that even though you set up a branch, you will not receive election, but they wanted support money from the PPDF. So later on, the formulation for coalition changed. Up to the present, um, methods have been changes for calculation for 2000. And 17, the branches does not affect the money for the support, but for support in receiving money from PPDF, you must be member, uh, and the member must pay to become member of the political party. In the present law, there are changes as well. Formerly, it's actually 200 baht and 2,000 baht for permanent membership. Then I was the member of the subcommittee, and there were discussions. Uh, actually, it was 100, 100 baht, I'm sorry, 100 baht. If there was too much, uh, it's impossible for the villagers to pay. So is it possible to pay 20 baht, which is 50 cent? But some of the uh, members have never been on site, so they do not understand that you know, the price uh, of membership was too expensive for the members. But later on, they actually voiced this, and they said to reduce the membership fee. So this year, prior to the election, the membership fees was changed to only 20 baht for membership. This is important for once the change in membership fee, then the rules and the law change as well. Uh, for the um, political party, for the support, which is the 2617 
was changed. Dr. Michai feels that the money for support for each of the local parties should stay because the money for support is part of providing opportunity for them to develop the parties. So there had been changes uh, for the allocation of the funding um, to provide the money to the PPDF. They try to provide transparency in the spending of the party, but actually that became an obstacle for the political parties to provide a report in the new form. They also at, uh, amend um, the um, um, punishment for not a uh, following the rules. Uh, so these are also the changes. Before I move on to the new changes and on regulations and spending, can I have the next slide, please? Please take a look at our work. People say, are you reading the literature review and do the um, report said no. Uh, we talk to the political parties, we do interview, and we, they provide feedback, which are great. And that allows me to work on other issues as well. We do online um, interviews for the small parties. They are, are providing a lot of important um, information as well. For the overview of party finance in Thailand, there are two main parts. The first, uh, the um, support from the PPDF. The other part is from the any other um, parties. Each of the components has different laws that control it. If um, for the PPDF, that comes from the actual uh, law controlling the PPDF. But the, for the other, um, it follows election party law. Let me talk about the PPDF first. There had been changes uh, in 2000, um, I'm sorry, 1998, there were only 25% support this actually comes from the total P PDF uh, money. They have to calculate how much they would provide to the support for the government. So a lot of times they might not follow the four main elements. It depends on the money allocated by the government. Later on, in 2000, uh, in the year 2000, they found that there was too many branches and that does not function, so that they adjusted the percentage. In 2017, there were great changes, so the calculation changed to 40, 40, 10, 10, to 100. So it would follow the actual main party, does not follow the branches anymore. Do we pay money? for support for the parties. Yes, we do. Thailand does pay. You can see the representative of the party. Sometimes they provide money for the member for registration. So you can say that some, for some party, it does not come from the pockets of the member, but it is money for uh, the payment that has been received from the government. I don't know whether this is good or not, you know, say like the for the Orange Party, for example, they do pay money to become members, uh, that the members really pay from their own pocket. But the some other parties, it might come from other allocations. Let me have the next slide, please. You can say the elements um, from the PPDF, there are board members who must decide everything. The law would change. The law um, that was set up in 2007, uh, this is wrong, the slide is wrong. Um, there are representative of the party who are in the board of the PPDF. Any changes uh, will have be, to be gone through that, but after that, uh, in 2017, there are no representative of the parties. Uh, the, they do not actually understand the party's need. Uh, they would just imagine for in this project, I have received feedback 
from the parties, and so I try to change the amount from 35 million to 44 million. So I would like to thank this project um, that had allowed me to participate in. The amount of money that has been increased is not stable. It would depend on the board. And you would have to look at the economy of the country as well. If we have good economy, then we, it might increase. So the amount of money for each of the party to use for canvassing the votes would depend also on the status of the economy. The uh, election board has actually very high power. I mean, I'm sorry, not the election board, the PPDF board has very high power to allocate the amount of money. The, also, the law that determines the political PPDF also provides a lot of money for receive from the tax. Uh, in Thailand, when you do uh, your tax um, um, payment, there is a tick box that you can say is you can then donate money to the party. Formerly, it was only 100 baht, but you can now increase to 500 baht, and you can say how much you want to pay, 100 baht, 200 baht, or not. So the money would be allocated to the um, your party of choice. At the same time, the money for the tax is very important because it's, you would determine the amount of money would be allocated. This year, I can declare, um, the Move Forward Party received a lot of donation, and the total money from the PPDF formerly was 12, 12 million, but now they receive 44 million. So it was a huge amount of money that they receive. Usually, they do not receive as much, but the Move Forward Party received a lot this year. So the amount of money from the tax, you can voice this. Uh, many parties say, how uh, can you, uh, the election commission would control the amount of the tax money? The amount of tax money should move straight to the party. but. Uh, what happened is that the election commission is now actually controlling this amount. We cannot change the law now because the election commission says once they actually you increase the, the it's the amount of tax and you should in be giving the PPDF more to the party. Therefore, the election commission should co be have the control on that as well. The report sees that as a recommendation to the Election Commission that first, any allocation of funding should change the percentage of the itemized of how you should pay. Say for many parties, if you look from the um, 1997 to 2017, most of the party that receive support money are large parties, but they do not really need it. The smaller parties receive smaller amounts. So there should be ways in which you should calculate so that the smaller parties receive more. This is not a recommendation only from us. Large parties also provide this feedback that says, can you provide a lot more money to the smaller parties so that we could have more um, up member of parliament from those smaller parties. Uh, this should be under the consideration of the board so that they could uh, tell the board. Uh, we should also have representatives on the board as well. Can I have the next slide, please? All right, so these are other incomes from the party they are also able to have uh, uh, money from membership, also from events, um, to raise money for the party, to raise donation to the party. This does not have to come to the tax money only. This also causes problems. A lot of times, there is no limit to these events trying to raise money. Any money that comes in, 
should be given to the parties, but that must be transparent. The election commission looks after this, but there's no limit. They should be transparency, should be declare how much money you get from. So near the time of the election, they should, uh, or many of the parties create events. You can also sell um, products. Uh, the law is funny because you can sell only uh, in certain areas, you can sell in the areas of the party, you can sell shirts, dolls, or uh, other products. You cannot sell it online because there is no law online. So if you actually you want to become an advanced political party, you cannot sell it online, then because there would be, there is a law against this. There are some parties want to sell it online and they request it from the election commission, but the election commission denies this. So if you want to improve, uh, uh, you need to amend this law to sell online. Donation must be no more than 10 million per person. Um, for the person, you can uh, donate 10 million to any parties, but usually they don't do it because it says, who are you to be donating this 10 million to the party? Let me talk about donation. You can see that donation, um, according to each of the country, is limited. In Thailand, it's actually quite high. It's 10 million. But um, personally, I'm not sure whether it's enough even 10 million. Some of the political parties has the percentage of the donations. Sorry, some countries would consider the percentage of the donations. And for Thailand, we maximize them at, at each individual at 10 million baht. So if there's a, a lot of individual donations, that would be quite substantive. But if you look at the report of the ECT, you would have just a repeated don donor at a high volume, or just a few, uh, a few uh, a group of them only, and it would be for the elections within the political party, if it's still the traditional form of elections. So the voting canvas is still there, and some of the budget might not be enough, and they, the campaigns require a substantive amount of money, and that's why the political party have to limit their spending. So the expenditures that they receive from the, the funding it's according to Article 84. I will not go into the details, but the spending, with the limitations, the limitation of the spending, as I said in the beginning, that we change from 1.5 million to per each MP in the district to 1.9, and from the party list of the political parties, and it would be 44 million. Personally, I interview. And I see that, that um, each of the political party have a clear metrics for the calculation so that the money would not exceed 44 million. It would be problematic. All the um, uh, campaign would be recorded. The, the system would be very in place in the big political party, but not so in the small party so that they avoid the violations of the law. And that is the amount, sorry, um, can we change the slide again? That is the amount of money that each country is allowed. So that would be the limitations of the spending that each of the political parties in each country could spend at the maximum level. It's lower than Thailand, but they can continue. But for Thailand, it's 44 million. But if you take a look at the country size for the Indonesia, Indonesia is bigger than Thailand, but it's still less amount of money. But if other country that is smaller than Thailand, they still you um, be able to use less money than Thailand. But for the recommendations, recommendation on the spending for the political parties, I believe that there should be opportunities to allow the political party to sell merchandise online, so that it would be another channel to earn revenue for them, and it would prevent 
the investment group to take controls of the political party because the political party can earn their own income and also increasing the budgeting further on the election campaign. It's already been increased year by year. And also the subsidy for the political party also. I have to say that the report has been written before the law has been uh, um, in launch and the the increase and the decrease as I mentioned before. And the next one is for political finance assessment of Thailand. Uh, the report of, of the um, financial statement of the political party, the new law said it has to be reported every three months before it's annually. So report by quarters when they draft their constitutions. They believe that it would increase transparency, but it turned to be a main challenge for the political party. The, for those that receive lo, um, substantive amount of donations, for example, the Move Forward Party, I talked to them. They said at the beginning it was so chaotic for them, but now it's quite okay they settle it because they cannot set the activities on site because if the, you go on site a lot on the field a lot that some of the districts said they might want to organize um activity and then there might some thing that unexpected happen and have to delay the activities and it would in turn impact to the financial statement report of at the headquarter, so it would like have the ripple effect on throughout the change. And there's another project I'm doing on the verifications of the spending, or uh, the, the money that being supported to the political party. It's very problematic because some of the political party cancel the activity so often because they receive um, a large volume of money, but they ca have to cancel the activities because they cannot act organize the um, activity on site. It's beyond their control. So it would impact the reporting system and they would be, um, they have to return the money always, all the time. They frequently, sometimes they re have to return 20 baht, 10, 15 baht, 100 baht, or 10,000 baht. And it doesn't look nice on the report, you know, and it would impact the image of the political party negatively. So it's a very main obstacle for the three, three months reporting for the political party. The annual reporting is all right. The political party can do well because it's the annual budgeting, including the revenue, the income, and everything. The recommendations that I received from the ECT and the political party that they're trying to change, but it's still proving quite difficult, is that they want to cancel the three months report and change it to six month report, or if it has to be three months report. So it has to be given like a grace period, like a from 15 days after the three three months, extended it to 30 days so that it would help with a small political party that have limited personal resources. And the next one, the disclosures of the in financial information of the ECT. ECT also disclosed on the website, but it's a, uh, overall information is not all, with all the detail. And so the general public would not see the transparency of the political party when they spend the money. Some of the political party that receive large amount of money, if you take a look at their activities, it's just a repeat um, activities again and again, and very small attendance, sometimes only 10 attendance, 15 attendance. Why do they need to organize it that way? So that they can completely use up the money, because otherwise you would feel such a regret. You need to return those money back to ECT. So they need to organize it just to use up the budget. And you have to report it within three months. It's make the political vote, have to rush themselves, expedite everything. And the activity organized would not be of good quality. And it is such a shame because we give the political party money because we hope that they would do something substantial. They have the capacity to do so, but all the law are really making it a deadlock for them. So it's like you're throwing the money into the water cannot achieve the cost effectiveness. But I would like to admire some political party that they organize the large scale activities and would have a good 
outcome and with good activity. So each political party have to come up with their own initiative. And the recommendation that I have is that the disclosures of information, the ECT need to do it more into detail, not just the overall budgeting about how much money they subsidize or given as a support, and also with the detail about the activities, spending, etc. If we take a look at the recent elections, there was no rules, but the new rules that they have to inform all the policies and to also to stay with the um, financials use, you know, if the activity that has been used by using the, the uh, public funding and it and then the ECT would disclose everything exactly, it would prove, improve the transparency. You don't need to go into the attendance detail, but inform the activities, what it has been done, not just the total amount of money that's been given to the political party. It would help improve the transparency. And the oversight is the next one. ECT have the provincial committee to overseeing the activity. Most of the ECT provincial uh, committees are friendly to the political party. Uh, lots of uh, people say that the ECT are not effective enough in that performance. But for me, been working for a long time, ECT really provide great assistance to the political party. They try to provide uh, impromptu solutions and great recommendations. But however, it's not really contributing to the effectiveness to political party because in Kongan, for example, ECT have only a few people working for them, but there's so many political parties that So the capacity is stretched by the ECT office and also the provincial ECT are not reporting to the central government. They are reporting to the headquarters in Bangkok and the headquarters also have limited personal resources. So recommendation is that the ECT should open up the opportunity for the CSO or the citizen in general to verify the spending of political parties. I am not sure what method it would be or what kind of approach, but if there's a third party to verify it, it would increase transparency and it would be like a clear show to, uh, to the people that what money has been used for the by the political party, and it would help the people make an informed decision on who to vote in the next time. And next is the sanction. The sanctions, if you make a mistake, the, uh, it would uh, cause the dissolution of your political party, but the new law is good. There's no dissolutions of the political party. Like the future forward is not by the law from the PPDF any longer. It's about something else. But if the political party dissolutions, and if there's a small, tiny mistake, for example, like a wrong date or sending the, the um, reporting outside the required date, and then they require political dissolution, that is too much. So if it's not applied anymore, not applicable anymore, those a small political party that's trying to build up that, that base could grow and become a bigger, and it would contribute to the political party to have their own income by improving the policies of the parties. There's some of the small political party always raise a co concern with me that why so limited amount of money? How can I build my parties? I agree with the ECT that the government has no duty in building up the political party. We, the state have the duty in supporting only and they need to earn their income by themselves. So if the political party rely on the subsidy from the from the government, it doesn't help them strengthen up their capacity. The government can provide assistance, but the political party also need to uh, strengthen their own capacity by themselves. So this is the, all the summary by the, of the report. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Punjada, for providing such a thorough um, summary of the report. Of course, each of you has the report in your folders. We have the report both in Thai and English, uh, so uh, I hope you have collected the language that you are most comfortable with. But also the reports have already been uh, uploaded online uh, as of yesterday, so you can also download it. Please share it with your networks, for um, with partners who you think can benefit from the research, from uh, the findings and the recommendations, uh, and please reach out to us if you have any questions, of course. Um, so, 
In addition to presenting the findings of the report, we also wanted to bring today here uh, two experts on uh, political finance who have worked on this issue and who know a lot about how things work in Thailand and um, have studied the, the weak linkages uh, in political finance in the country. So our, one of our first commentators uh, is Dr. Paul Chambers. Uh, thank you for uh, flying into Bangkok uh, to join us today. <laughs> uh, Dr. Chambers is a lecturer and special advisor on international National Affairs at the Center of Asian Community Studies at the Faculty of Social Sciences uh, at uh, Narishwan University. Narishwan University, I always, yeah, of course, I, I, my pronunciation is not very good. Um, he has uh, written more than 100 publications, which includes uh, journals, articles, uh, reports under his name. Uh, Dr. Chamber focuses uh, his research on the issues of democratization, civil military relations, and international affairs in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, he was also part of the expert groups meeting that we held in November to share the initial findings and his insights, uh, including his written comments on the report, were really, really useful while we were finalizing the report. So we are very pleased and honored to have you here today to talk not just about the findings of the report, your impressions, but also uh, what do you think is the way forward for the country? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess if you can put my, ah, okay, it's coming up, all right. Um, yeah, thank you, International IDEA, for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I also want to uh, uh, thank everyone who, Kapkun uh, Tan Nakrap Thi Matini it's really a pleasure to be here, and uh, I want to express my appreciation to Dr. Punchada, uh, the lead consultant, as well as the editors. Um, it's, I think it's really an all-encompassing report, uh, looking at public funding, private funding, spending regulations, reporting disclosure requirements, oversight, and sanctions. Okay, That's a lot. Okay, um, so when we look at Thailand and political party finance, Thailand has one of the most sophisticated cases in Asia for party finance. And English. <laughs> so. I think I'll wait. Deal raw uh, PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Ah, here we are. Okay, I thought that's a nice cartoon for you uh, to understand. Every plan, every country took but pat me banha got political party finance. Okay, but that tied the way. Um, so this is a very comprehensive analysis. And we, Amy. Okay, I'll just go ahead. It's a comprehensive analysis of the current political finance framework in Thailand, and I think it does justice to some of the problems that are being encountered. Um, looking at Thailand. Thailand is one of only 50% of Southeast Asian countries that require political parties to report on their campaign finances. And even though Yang Chen, now this is an example of the sophisticated nature of party finance laws in Thailand. Okay? Um, of course, we have to remember that a lot of countries, in fact, I'd say most of the countries in Asia are not on a democratic par with Thailand anyway. So of course, Thailand would have more sophisticated finance laws. Personally, I think it's more sophisticated than in my country in the United States, okay? <laughs> but we have Donald Trump. 
<laughs> okay. But that's that's being said. <laughs> but continuing, I'm trying to use up time. So you'll thought by the next uh, third, fourth slide. Yeah, thought by. Next. Ah, one back. Oh, okay, good. All right. Okay, only two out of seven countries in Southeast Asia, that being Myanmar and Thailand, have limits on the amount third parties can spend on election campaign activities. This is Myanmar even after the coup. In Thailand, the spending limits for a political party or candidate include the spending by any other person on behalf of the candidate or the political party. For Asian countries, this includes Cambodia, Myanmar, Nepal, as well as Thailand, provide no free airtime. Thailand grants state subsidies to all political parties. And indeed, this has been a bone of contention about how much the state subsidies, right? Thailand has adapted a match, adopted a matching funds regime in which 40% of subsidies are granted to parties on the basis of their electoral support, another 40% in accordance with their subscription fees, and the rest 20% depending on the number of branches, okay? Which Ajahn Poncheta has written a lot about. Regarding pu public funding, the report at hand recommends revising the, fund, the subsidy funds allocation formula to allow small parties to receive a larger public subsidies. Also tying the amount of subsidies received by political parties to the number of female candidates, members of parliament. Consider allocating free broadcast time for campaign activities. All of these I agree with. I would also recommend that the state carefully scrutinize the identity of some of these small parties. Oftentimes there are these tiny parties simply seeking some money uh, from public funding for personal gain. Okay. What about private funding? Well, in Thailand, donations from public companies, foreign entities, and gambling businesses are banned. The report recommends Though Thailand imposes donation caps, consider revising the current maximum amount of 10 billion uh, baht, 10 million baht, to political parties, especially during an election year. And issue coherent regulations on the online sale of souvenirs, in addition to physical sales, to allow parties to earn more income. I would recommend also that the unlimited private funding for parties which some kind, sometimes can get through to parties, okay? Really, there needs to be more enforcement, okay? As for spending regulations, the report recommends revising the maximum spending limit for electoral campaigns for both candidates and political parties, introducing a regulation on online campaign spending, including placing limits on how much can be spent and taking steps to ensure better transparency. Also issue guidance to distinguish between vote buying and customary gift giving by politicians. I agree with both of the, all of these. This is great. Of course, I would also recommend retaining some kind of maximum spending limit, but do not get rid of it. And I would recommend better enforcement on the ban of Vote buying. Oversight mechanisms. Cons uh, the report says, consider involving party representatives in the decision-making process concerning new regulations to avoid the adoption of policies that not, cannot be, in that's great, okay? And strengthen and empower CSOs in Thailand to serve as effective watchdogs that's excellent. That's something that really needs to happen. Okay. Um, I guess my only recommendation here is to try to make sure that the CSOs 
are given an effective voice. In other words, exactly how can we get CSOs to play a role, an effective role? Now, turning finally to sanctions. Well, C Sri Lanka probably has the most liberal sanctions framework in Asia, while India, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand are the strictest. Okay, Thailand's very strict. Only Thailand contemplates the loss of public funding on top of other pecuniary, criminal, or administrative sanctions. Most Asian countries provide for at least one type of sanction, uh, like a loss of political rights or a suspension of candidates. But Thailand dissolves political parties based upon party finance violations. For example, the dissolution of Anakot Mai, which was connected to a donations case. Okay. There was also the case of the Pak Prachatipat, which was not dissolved. And so this gets to my main point, and that is that, you know, Thailand suffers from two problems today, I think. Other problems every country has, but the ones I'll talk about. <laughs> and that is, in Thailand, there has been a judicialization of politics. At the same time in Thailand, there's been a politicization of the judiciary. Not everything, but in some cases, yes. Okay. We have to admit that there are certain partisan forces that are involved in the dissolution of some political parties, okay. such as Anakot Mai. And perhaps those same partisan forces are against dissolving Pak Okay. So I would recommend for sanctions, diminishing the harshness of, of these sanctions, especially those when the dissolution seems to be geared toward attacking certain political parties. I think Thailand really suffers from using party dissolutions as an alternative to military coups. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, I know we're talking about political party finance, but I had to bring the military in here somehow. <laughs> so anyway, other than that, I think the report is wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chambers, for your remarks. and. Uh, also for guiding the next steps, which is a, his presentation was a testimony that the work uh, is not over, obviously. It has just begun. There's a lot that needs to be done, and uh, uh, this was the first step, and we hope to uh, also take on board his additional recommendations uh, as we continue to work in the country. Um, our second commentator for the day. Um, will you make any uh, is uh, Dr. Ladawan Tantivitaya Pitak. She is a human rights activist since 1976, uh, and, uh, and she started working with Poll Watch in 1993, and then went on to serve as an official of the Election Commission of Thailand for 15 years. She retired as the Secretary General of the Law Reform Commission of Thailand, and then joined Poll Watch Foundation as its Secretary General, which she continues to date. I would like to hand over the mic to you. Thank 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 you. If I speak Thai, I believe you also gain the insight for uh, those of you who do not speak Thai. So we have the simultaneous interpretation service for you. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Panchada for conducting this study, which I think of immense importance because the finance. Actually, I still have doubt. Why do we not use money politics directly? 
or does it sound negative? That's why you use political finance. We Political finance is quite uh, technical and formal, but in the end, it's money politics anyhow. It is an interesting topic indeed, because uh, finance is an influence that determines the life of the political parties and the candidates for all time. You cannot refuse that money is the uh, f uh, has the final say for the election vote, the way to achieve power, and also for negotiations in the parliament nowadays. We are not critiquing anyone, so we want to keep everything in line because they are forming the government right now. They might say the CSO. Uh, of course, we need to take part. Okay, let's continue with our topic for today. Um, can I have the first slide, please? This is the opinion. First of all, I would like to have a caveat that the political party, it has to be the political parties for the people. It's a mechanism to uh, go uh, to govern the countries, to administer the country. So political party, it has to come from the people, not a private company. It has to come from the people. And, and a people organization. It has to come with transparency. It has to have accountabilities. It's open for scrutinies, and then the people need to take a part in it. And most importantly, how do we make the political party strengthen that? Uh, with strengthen the political parties, how to make it really people based organizations? And finance is important. What the professors has kindly presented in uh, various topics and with the recommendations and finding. I see your effort and diligence, and I see a lot of good recommendations. What I would like to stress and highlight, uh, and that is to not mention in your presentation earlier, is that the support the considerations for the financial support that the political party should receive from the female candidate proportions. Actually, I should say the female member, not just a female candidate or the, the female MP, but if you add the elements of the gender lens or the females who um, uh, members, female candidate who participate in the political party uh, with the considerations for the allocations of PPDF budget that we could. It's not about gender equalities or anything, but what I want to say is that this is very important issue. We need to promote more um, female in politics because we know that the structures are not conducive for that. And a number of factors limited the access of the female into the political arena. Nowadays, then the CSO has a proposal that women should participate more in politics. And I asked the female candidate in the past, the political party said, it's very hard to recruit female candidates, especially in, in the up countries. That's your number of limitations. But if you have the incentive to help them, it would advance in the pathway for women to enter politics. Another important recommendation that I would like to raise that the, uh, the Dr. Paul has just mentioned is about the, on, uh, the finance report, financial report that should be disclosed. And we should simply find it. From Professor Ratchada mentioned that it's uh, it's a three months report and they would they're not changing yet to six months. They should change it to six months from three months to six months report uh, quarters. But the problem might not be just about the report itself or three months or six month report, but the system of reporting is too troublesome, too complicated. 
I used to be in the government system before. So when you need to do a reporting, the evidence you need to gather was like a, everything, all the tiny bills. It's so complicated. Actually, I admire Kungrit when I work uh, in the in the area. I admit that I used to be in ECT before. I I know that the work about political parties it's taking massive amount of effort. It's very you need to deal with a number of political party that at the olden day there's no system in place at all. So when you want to issue regulations and framework, it's quite difficult as well. But I see constant improvement and progress. But the most important thing is that if you still have the mindset of just controlling the mindsets on the base of that might be the potential corruption in that place or those places. If you come up with this kind of idea, it's very bureaucratic thinking, very general bureaucratic mindset. I, I have the direct experience because I've been invited as a speaker or uh, the lecturers by using the, the, uh, the PPDF for one political party. And after a month, they call me and ask for my copy of my ID card. I was just a guest speaker. Normally, the copy of ID has already been issued. That is not required. You can just input the 13 numbers, and you don't need a copy of ID any longer. But the ECT still require copy of ID card. So this is a tiny thing, but it is a problem. Like it could impact the way they decide the activity, as the professor say. So that's why the same old people, because you already have everything in place. If you want to organize art activity, you need to come up from scratch about how you sources or evidence and how you go from A, B, C, D. But actually, I do have a proposal. But right now, what I would like to say that simplify the process. And nowadays, use the digital tools to help you. There's an online uh, transaction with a clear evidence, concrete one. It would help a lot. So decide to make everything more up to date, more cutting edge. And so online finance report. And the next one is that the party should um, make their regulations uh, so she should um, simplify the regulations for the political party so that they can do it better. They can organize a better activity. They can use new innovations to set up the activities so that they could strengthen the members' parties and also encourage the civic participations. And the political parties should have the roles in designing the regulation as well. The, um, I believe that the ECT uh, also have the hearing from political party and try to improve the, the um, rules and regulations. But how do we do to get the CSO to play an active role, to have an active engagement in the designing stage? Uh, Ali, are you doing that? I do. We get the director to help us facilitate with the slide presentations. But what I would like to also say, a very important recommendations, is that how do we do? Sorry, um, on previous slide, please. How do we do um, so that the political party, well, this might be a different opinion from the, the Professor Panchita. As we say, the political parties are important in the way that they would achieve the power to govern the, the country. So we should not provide support to large political party. All the rules and regulations, yes, on one hand, is to support the political party in nature. But how do we um, encourage the diversification of the growth of the small political party? So in the three years, I believe that we should encourage the growth of the small political party. We might need to set up a mechanism and a specific tool for those small political party, aside from the main one, the main one that we already have for the big political party. And it's a small political party. By the time they can formulate and register their parties, it requires such a lengthy process and time. It takes considerable time to 
to formulate the members and register their parties. So if they could set up the party, we should give them ample opportunity to grow in maybe two or three years at the beginning, specific support so that, you know, from toddler, they could walk in because otherwise the benefit would be funneled into the large political party mainly. And the next one is that the PPDF, the political party fund, need to be flexible. Another point in case is that tax, the, the tax the, for individual tax or juristic person's tax, when you pay the tax at the end, you can have the checkbox whether you want to donate for a political party. I want to propose that, of course, we we uh, give the funding from the PPDF with the limitations with the and we don't have a large amount of money. So what I want to say that the, the donations for political party could be used to reduce personal tax. Just like when you uh, donate to the foundations or hospitals or temples, you can use the receipt for the reductions of personal tax. I think this would be another approach that would enable the political party to earn uh, more when, and have more channel to receive the donations. And the money that would come into the open channel would would help them because we want to limit the money that go in the back door, right? Because there's a lot of backdoor money. And if we can have the open system, it would increase the transparency considerably. And I would like to continue just a little bit. When we take a look at the financial system, there's an open and closed one. We talk about the open system, right? Through the funding, through the regulations, through the reporting system. If we take a look at the closed system, the closed system, actually here, I actually I get this from news, very important, uh, in interesting articles, and where I did the homework because I've been asked to express my opinions about this. This is from the news from Thai PBS on 11 of May. It stated that the elections on the 14th of May, that the circulations of the money in the economy increasing substantially. For the first three months of this year, it increased more than 200 billion. And if we take a look, that you know, 200 billion baht increase. The increase, of course, it means that uh, there's three, every quarter there's money circulated in the economy for sure. And then there would be the reporting. But specifically, during the election time, there's a hike up. And the number that the professor said that political party have the limitations on the spending during the election day or election time, right? A 44 million cap that they could spend for each party for the campaigning that this is a ceiling or the limit for spending 44 for the but if it's per individual candidate it's 1.9 million baht so i times the money i calculated in the past elections we had the uh, 4781 candidate for constituencies and we have the political parties who submitted the party list as uh, 67 parties so I times them. So if I combine all the number, it's about 12 billion baht. 12 billion baht here in red. I, actually, this is such a large number. I never have imagined before. But the Bank of Thailand stated that during the first three months of the year, the elections time, the money that been circulated in the economy increased by more than 200 billion baht. Two hundred billion baht. And this has been affirmed that by the Thai Chamber of Commerce that the amount of the money spent in all the constituency are circulated 
more than 120 billions. And it's also corresponding to the news team of the um, the one that where we find the information from the Bank of Thailand that the amount of banknotes circulating in the economy for the first three months, which is January to March, it increases more than 234 billion or 3.47%. And if you uh, segregate them, the 1,000 baht bank note has um, more circulation by 1.9 percent. So it seems it means that they are giving out 1,000 baht now, not 500 baht, because the circulations of the 500 baht bank note are decreasing by 14.2 percent. But actually, the money that would reach to the people might be 500 baht because the it got deducted. You know, on on the way in Thailand, we, they always deducted the money and keep it in their own pockets. So we have to accept that the board buying in Thailand still persists. They still give out lots and lots of money still. There's a circulation of the money in the economies. But I ask why? Why it happened? And what is ECT doing? I'm sorry to say so. I'm wearing ECT shirt, but I, I need to ask you these questions because give me a second, please. There's an opinion. There's an opinion. of the Bank of Thailand that the amount of the electronic on transactions increased significantly, especially the, uh, the internet and mobile banking channel. There's more or the transaction of more than 2,182 times a transfer, a million transfer per month, growing by 39.6%, comparing to the same period of last year. So it's indicated that the direct uh, give hands out of the money still happened because I see the news that the police arrested, and we watch also reported that they arrest the people. With uh, who give out the money for board buying and FinNet also report all the volunteer, not just FinNet and we watch. In the past, we received a volunteer from multiple CSO organization, ILO, other people uh, organization themselves. They work to, uh, to the fullest of their capacities for the board buying detections. ACT also have re rapid task force. They devoted. A, so much money to the police, uh, to the, all the district, to have the mobile unit to detect it, this kind of, of uh, violations. It, they, they arrest them, but I don't know what happened because we, uh, there's been no issue of yellow card and red cards. There's a few cases, maybe more than that, 100 cases, but the results of the the case consideration is really slow. But I'm not going to refer to some of the expedite judgment. So some of the judgments very quickly done, but the red card and the yellow card is taking forever to process. I don't know why, but you use so much money to detect these kind of violations. Yeah, so what buying happened? But it said here that it's been through done through mobile banking nowadays. So what is ECT doing? What the mobile banking? Can you worry find it? Can you s detect the wrongdoing? So what I want to say is that the law actually invested so much authority to uh, ECT regarding the mobile banking as well. Because Article Thirty Two or Section Thirty Two. Section 32 of the uh, the ECT law, um, the election law, um, 
investor power to the ECT to request the information from the Bank of Thailand if they have doubt about the fraudulent or suspicious transactions. Did ECT attempt to even use this article or this section or ask for the information on the financial transaction online? Because the law already um, allow you to do so. And if you detect it, you can immediately stop the, the actions. But it seemed to me that I, I am not sure, certain whether ECT utilized these sections or not. If you use it, I believe that the 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 report from the Bank of, of Thailand has been launched weeks before election day. So I believe that the ECT would be fully aware about it. So do you have any attempt to have any measures to manage this problem? Because I think it would still persist in the future it's about the online vote buying. So should ECT work on this? Because you already have the power um, issued uh, as vested in you. The last part, actually, this is what where I would like to end at the beginning. That ECT should have the measures because the there's a uh, development in using the money to do what buying or the, in the finance money in politics so, and also impact the roles of ECT. But because I am from the and uh, CSO, Open and forward. I would like to add something that uh, the ECT is still not doing, which is the CSO to really have a part in the uh, political elections. We received the support from to the CSO to take part in it, but nowadays we have to come up by our own financial means, even though the laws allow the ECT to provide support to the CSO. The, especially Section 9, to allow the ECT to support to the CSO, also including general public uh, to inform, uh, to report it about any suspicious behavior so that the elections would be transparent and fair and just. But the ECT do not use us, CSO. For me, I would like to link the CSO with ECT. And it, it ends that our CSO have to come up with the mean ourselves. And for the CSO, also we need we trying to have an outreach with ECT to talk to ECT, but the ECT is, uh, seem to have the um, belief that we can uh, the CSO can just stand on our own two feet and verify the transparency and fairness of the election by ourselves. So this is the last one. It's about the section twenty two bracket five to promote and support the. the um, CSO so that they, we can work on civic educations and educations and so we are trying at uh, the Open Forum for Democracy Foundation we're trying to work to 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 encourage the people to understand how important their word is so and uh, the next one I know that I need to end soon because I run over the time but this is about the um, Article 9, uh, Section 9, about the, the Election Act, so that the ECT could uh, provide support to the CSO. So CSO could detect the wrongdoing and to report such uh, wrongdoing to the ECT. It is very clearly stated, but I don't see ECT doing anything. So my re last recommendation is that please ECT implement the law effectively. Maybe or maybe not effectively, but just implement it first, enforce it first, especially section 39, sections 5 and section 9, 532. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ladawan, uh, for your very insightful uh, reflection of the report, but also of uh, political finance framework in general. Uh, and I think your presentation was a perfect prelude to open the floor for discussion because you put a lot of questions for a lot of our um, participants, uh, including Election Commission of Thailand, uh, who are present here. So um, we have approximately 20 minutes for questions. 
yeah, so we can have questions, reflections, because we don't want to just have this one-way conversation just from the speakers, but we also would like to hear from you, uh, the beneficiaries of the report, our stakeholders who are present here, and also maybe if you want to answer some of the questions that were being posed by our speakers and presenters. Um, there are mics on the table, so please, uh, when you speak, if you could introduce yourself and the organization or institution you represent, it would be much appreciated. Anyone? want to give the first shot. Yes. สวัสดีครับผมเมธามาดขาว from uh, campaign for popular democracy หรือคณะกรรมการรณรงค์เพื่อจะไตนะครับเอ่อเท่าที่ According to what I've listened to, I ha I want to have a question. The law for the political party, does it follow the human rights uh, when you're talking about the branches and the uh, amount of budget that is supporting? Is that a lot of times it looks more like capitalism to me or more like um, a total uh, totalitarian, totalitarian control where uh, those who have a lot of money can control the political parties. So I don't know whether there are anything written in the law when you are talking about um, using money outside of the system. For, say, for example, if someone donate um, not more than 10 million for party for per year, but you know, say Palang Prasharat, they would receive 10 million, right? But I think uh, uh, they some other parties have also 5 million per person, but they do they use um, more than that uh, according to that? Uh, I think uh, for the move forward party, I think there's one person who is um, donated one million. But you know, when you're using money for election and for uh, possibly vote buying, many of the parties are using more than al allowed by the law. Is there further recommendations to ensure that a spending um, um, for election, I wanted to see whether there are any laws concerning political parties in Thailand, which is balanced with, you know, international law. Because as I understand, it's uh, an operational law that should not be, um, you know, should be reconsidered. Thank you. Should we take a couple of questions and then maybe we'll respond? Yes, sir. Please. Yes, I have a question. Um, I am advisor at Pure Thai Party. Formerly, I was working with the ECT. I think many people looked at me when we were talking about ECT. I was there. I have left uh, about two years ago. So thank you very much, IDEA, that uh, has uh, set up this interesting and important event. Last time I was there, I was here too. So thank you for Dr. Panchada's report. It is an interesting and important report that may lead to changes in terms of political finance um, for the better. So I have certain points that I would like to present to the researchers and all the participants. First, uh, from what you had presented as a report and, uh, and, and verbally, I agree in the four main points, and but I have uh, three points which differs from your presentation. I would like to point out one point that you did not present or touch up on as well. In the four points that I agree upon, first is that I agree with what you had uh, presented uh, of the components of the board of the um, 
PPDF because formerly they were representative of the parties, but at the present law does not include any uh, representative. So that does not consider uh, the board oftentimes do not consider the real application of the law. It's very difficult. I agree totally that when you are reviewing uh, the constitution or the organic law for the constitution, you must amend this section so that that is representative of the political party as part of the board of the PPDF. That is the first point and agree with. Second, uh, donation for the tax. I agree that the research uh, sir had um, said that it should be belong or go straight to the party. It should not be controlled by the ECT or regulated by the ECT. The ECT should just forward the amount to the party and the party would report to the ECT. But in reality, it's not like that. The uh, donation, even through tax, the party would have to create a format uh, for proposal for using that. And if they don't follow the proposal, they have to return the money. I think that uh, this is something that should not happen. The money should be forwarded to the party, and they should be allowed to freely use it. But certainly, you have to report within the financial spending. The third point that I agree with is to the selling of the products and services. Actually, if you don't want the parties to be controlled by possible capital groups, you should allow them to have these sort of activities. But in the present law, <coughs> there are certain points that is limited, both with the products itself you can sell only memorabilia or souvenirs, but you should be able to sell maybe like rice to help the people, rice to help the farmers, for example. That would be at a good price. You are limited. You are not allowed to do this. You are limited at your venue for selling. You must sell only at the headquarters of your party. You have to sell only at the branches. For example, these are limitations, but at present, any the market for any buying is online. So if you allow the parties to do this, that they would have real income and they can rely on themselves more. So I agree with this point. The fourth point I agree with is the report on the spending of every three months. There's huge problems, I agree. Possibly six months or one year is better than three months because in certain activities, there are changes and there are obstacles. A report of every three months is very difficult. These four points I agree with. There are some other points I agree with, but I am not mentioning them now. In the points where I differ in opinion, firstly, uh, for dissolution of the party, I think that certainly if you are misspending, should not be a cause for dissolution. But I agree with Section 12 in the p political parties. Um, I think if you receive the donation, um, which are from fraudulent source, this is something that you should be considered. Say, Anakot uh, Mai. Future forward. future forward party when they were dissoluted is that when they actually uh, loan, had money on loan from the head of the party, uh, a lot of times you don't know those who come in and donate, you don't know where they come from. Uh, but if there are people who complain saying that that donation or this person uh, from fraudulent uh, sources or from gray sources, and it would lead to dissolution of the party. It's a danger or a risk to that political party. This is a point where I would like to point out. Something that I disagree with is, as mentioned by Dr. Paul Chambers, that uh, you should, uh, there is a ceiling of about 10 million per year, but the event for raising fund uh, has no ceiling. Um, I think there might be a limitation how much 
is appropriate. It is something that you should question how much. 100 million, is that enough? 200 million? I think this sh should be open, but it should be clear and transparent who is joining this event for fundraising, and uh, it should be declared openly. And there is a point as an issue that I wish to uh, for you to take note. The research has not mentioned this at all, is the um, amount of money allocated according to the political parties. It is written in the law uh, according to Section 11. Uh, it is the uh, received from Section 78.2. Many times the, elect, uh, the ECT would receive the amount of money for allocation, and within the amount, the office must pay not less than 50%, but not more than 70% of the amount allocated. But each year, the amount is not the same. Some year, the government give you 200 million, 400 million. There is no clear criteria. So these money are allocated to the political party, not more than, not less than 50%, not more than 70%. But the problem is that once we receive the allocation from the budget office, there will be some money left that has not been given to anyone. It's accumulated. The money that is accumulated would uh, be would rest at the PPDF. At present, there is accumulated fund of about a uh, hundred and fifty million. I'm sorry, one uh, uh, ten billion, one point five billion. I'm sorry. So um, they cannot give any of this accumulated fund to the political parties. But then the, they, they said, no, they cannot allocate anything. It must be the, from the yearly budget. But actually, the budget office said, uh, yes, you can. But the ECT said, no, it, they, they, there is no regulation. That I think this is a limitation. Uh, the money is gone. It's $1.5 billion. It's sitting there at the PPDF uh, office. So... There should be written in a new law or an amended law of how you can use this amount. This is a note that I want to provide. It is not mentioned by the report at all. Thank you. Uh, should we respond to, so that we don't accumulate too many? Because there are too many ideas that are coming. So would you like to take Punchida first? Thank you very much for the fundraising, I we uh, I agreed in the same directions with with Director Grit. I'm sorry, I used to call you Director all the time. So there should be no limitations because it's the only opportunities to earn, uh, earn the income to the political parties. That is not against the law, but it needs to be transparent about um, about who donated what was received, and, and the ECT also need to be able to observe. That needs to be done so that it's clear that when you organize this fundraising activity, how the money flow, how it has been spent for the elections, and it would be the single fund um, activity of the political party to use the money earned to um, use it for their campaigning. I might say that the Prashati Party, Democratic Party, that have it sporadically, but it's not a big fundraising, not like the one that they would organize near the election day. So I think this is necessary, and there should not be any limitations on the donations amount. And another one, the questions about the violations of the human rights. Um, a part of it, I believe that it's violation later, the strong democracy uh, formations. Because to establish a political party, to grow the political party, it should be the needs of the people to build it up. But the ECT or the lawmaker, um, they're trying the limit of the political party's formulations in every tiny issues. 
whenever they see the misdeed of a tiny small mistake of the small political party, they have the announcement to handle those tiny problems. They don't see the whole pictures, the whole mechanism that it is a problem from the small political party, but it has an impact on the large political party that they already have a good system in place about that. Um, and do issue um, a regulation to, uh, um, you know, like have a guillotine on the small political party. But, and then they launch it without having any prior announcement. So it's very confusing for the political party, especially for the new political party, like for example, the Move Forward Party. They uh, they have so much money coming into the parties that they can't follow up on the news regulation, news announcement, because when they submit it, there's a mistake, and then they couldn't make a, a correct report in time. So they need to send the money back again. So when I verify the money spent, uh, the money earned into the parties, and uh, got, Move Forward, has so much money coming to the party, as I said. When there's some of the spending, it's very small, like 20, 25 baht. And it's not their fault. There's so um, repertoires of um, regulations that have been launched and announcement again and again. And it's limited the growth of political parties. In a way, and they can't keep track of the announcement. And we talk about political parties in the other countries. Is there any that is democratic enough? I'm not going to talk about the European country. It's hard for us to compare with them. It's a different benchmark altogether. So let's compare with Indonesia, our neighbor. They also have the political finance laws, and also they subsidize the support to the same way with Thailand. But they don't have such limitations like Thailand. The political financing uh, in Indonesia is very small, it's very thin. But in Thailand, you have sections and sections and sections. And so it's very different limitations altogether. And the way they calculate it, I personally feel that Indonesian's calculations formula are more fair, are fairer. They're just focusing on the, the election results only. They don't take a look at the branches or the member, anything. So it's encouraged the growth of democracies. The small parties are in Indonesia. Indonesia, if you follow up, you see that they can grow up until the present day. But at a small party in Thailand, in a short period of time, they disappear because there is no support to provide. And the political parties also have no no way to support themselves and no, no assistance from the government. But Indonesia received this assistance from the political from the government and the the political party themselves, they survive a few times in the election round and they could grow continuously. So this is the short answer I'd like to give. Um, Kun Ma, some uh, your comment. For your comment. Yo, uh, uh, so, uh, <laughs> so I understand your comment about the unlimited uh, funding uh, and you don't agree with me. Um, let me amend what I said to say specifically that I do not support unlimited funding by one, either one corporate donor or one person. Actually, uh, in experiences in many countries in the world, uh, you can have many people, uh, each person, donating a certain amount. And so it it becomes, it is still very democratic, uh, but there is a limit for each person. Uh, and when you put it all together, yes, it can be lots and lots and lots of money, okay? But it still becomes democratic. That way you don't end up with a single donor like Rockefeller power dominating one party and maybe one country by creating a hegemonic political party uh, which scoots all the other parties out of the equation. Uh, and that can become, you know, less and less democratic over time. Um, at the same time, I think that if it's unlimited uh, finance for a single donor, uh, there can become problems of a lack of transparency and a lack of accountability that I think at that point, the Gagata really needs to work hard to ensure against. So. Just again, I am uh, mostly talking about uh, limiting by donor, okay? So limits per donor uh, and limits per corporate donor. Thank you.
for there. So once he does it, and I would like to request you to please keep your questions brief because uh, unfortunately we don't have unlimited time and we have other two sessions as well. So please keep your questions brief so that uh, we can receive uh, more questions from the floor. And also for the organizers of the report launch, and I would like to thank Dr. Panchada to presented very insightful information. Dr. Panchada and me, we are all in Mahidol University together. But when I established the political party in the year 2007, um, I think uh, Dr. Panchada is starting the, uh, another piece of research. We did not get to talk a lot about political parties, but I, it is a, I am glad to see your progress in the field and also in the expertise regarding political parties. In the year 2007, I would like to uh, give a rationale a little bit before the questions. The problem of the small political party has been chronic, has been ongoing for a long time. So it is still persisting right now to the current day. Since I uh, established the Sangkom Pachati Patai Party, or Democratic Socialist Party, Social Democratic Party, and I argue with the director grid who sat next to me about how I name my parties. And I have to uh, shorten my political party so that it responding to um, not repeating the same name as the old parties. Even though we don't use the exact word, but the uh, ECT is really strict. It could not be even similar. So we want to work on the ideologies and it encounters so much trouble. The proposals by the Professor Panchada regarding uh, self-reliance of the political party, I think it is in very vital. We should not support the political party to receive large amount of uh, subsidy from the PPDF so that they could grow. But I believe that the democracy, you need to have self-reliance. Um, uh, because you can go by the members, right? You rely on the member. I see Dr. Paul's nodding. I know you understand Thai really, really well. So the member need to contribute to the uh, the the funding of the the political parties in a really good amount so that it could grow. You cannot rely on the outside donor. So how do we encourage the process of as, um, providing the support, financial support to the political party by the member in an easier way? Before that, we asked for the, end, um, the enrollment fee for 100 baht. And we had a goal that we will collect one baht per day and per year would be 365. But, but we have the way to pay, it could be right quarter, by half year, or whatever. But it's still very difficult. But nowadays, the online payment is so much convenient. I believe that we should pay attention on how do we get the member of political party pay the support on the financial term to the political party in an easier way. And I was so surprised by the information I received from, from you. I also follow up on this issue that the, um, the financial support by the member of the political party, it would be collected in the same rate as all political party. It should not be like that. Each of the political party should be able to determine that the, the supporting, uh, you know, financial support by the member by themselves. It might be at first five, uh, 100 to 50, and then at the end 20. It's so much concern. How do we increase this amount and also to expedite the conveniency in the collections they could pay mid-year they could pay in allocation form or uh, if 20 baht per year it's too close to the uh, the financial support in the labor union in the many organization which is very very low rate so i would like to encourage ect or ppdf and also the researchers to please encourage so that a member could be a strong driving force and to pay more for the political parties. Thank you. More question because we have actually gone over time, but we will have opportunity to talk a lot more during the break and throughout the day. So for you. Thank you. Uh, from so I would like to speak in Thai. I would like to add just a short point. I believe that it involves the declaration or disclosures of the expenditure to the ECT. I think that the political parties are trying to send the observer 
to observe in the ballot point, uh, just normal observer. ECT say that they need to use in, uh, add that into the expenditure for their uh, election campaign. So it would have a negative impact on the observer's process and uh, to protect the rights of the people as well. And it is quite a threat. Um, so in the area that they think it should be a concern, the political party should be able to send their own people. So with this kind of uh, issues, and they need to enclose it into expenditure, it um, kind of like a, a barrier to them. And we think it should not be expenditure. It's nothing to do with the uh, election campaign at all. So I would like to propose that this ECT should understand about the observer st uh, roles and status. Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll take one last one, <laughs> but then we really need to move on uh, and go for a coffee break. I think uh, we could uh, help ourselves. My name is Sukun Su Songtham from the Open Forum for Democracy Foundation. I believe that there's no break. So I was waiting actually for my coffee, but if there's no break, I, I believe that we can continue for a long time. So if the moderator says uh, to please make it short and sweet. So I believe that there's some point I would like to inform the meeting. But when the, during the research process, I actually agree with the, uh, the, the key point, the key finding. But when you take a look at the law that's regulated, the whole financial uh, po politics system. When the EEC, when they draft the law, they will send it to the uh, the parliament and they would be under consideration. And the ECT also send the representative there. So the uh, purpose is to control. But we want to make them see that it should be in the support and promotions, but it would not be passed because we are just a minority there. I am the also member of the commissions in the organic laws for the our constitutions, laws, and I am so involved very closely, and I see the a very negative attitude uh, that they have towards the politicians and political party, both from the ECT and the bureaucrats. So when you want to support the political party, you have to come up with a new mindset that you want to have a law that really in a supportive manner, just as Dr. Ladawan said. The example in Indonesia that the political party should receive more support. Actually, you don't need to interfere them for three years. You just provide them with the um, money allocation that they report to you once every year. No need to control them. And then for the three years, you can verify whether they have more members, they have more capacities in the sending more candidates for the next election or not. So this is the uh, idea when we um, can reform the law in the futures. And also the fee for the political party or the supporting finance to the political party. I think it is necessary for the people to take part in supporting the growth of political parties. This kind of the supporting fee, you should not determine the cap or the exact amount. Let the people support in any way that they can. For example, the online transactions, if they want to be a member, they might pay 20 baht or 100 baht per month if, if they feel like it. They, they could be member of multiple political parties if they feel that those political parties work well together in, as a government. They might donate money to multiple parties. And I think this is by volunteer, by the will of the people. But as he said, you can be a member of just one single political party. This is a limitation of the rights of the civic. But if I like two political parties, I want to support two political parties, you cannot judge me for that, correct? But when I vote, I can vote just one. It's depending on me as well. And this is how I think. And... And for the engagement of the people to um, monitor and verify the election, the ECT, especially this set of ECC. I don't know if there's any representative from the ECT here. To be honest, the work that you have with the CSOs really you are below par. 
but you lack communication with the CEOs of a significant and it make us the CEO. At first, we approach the secretary. For the secretary, is okay because he's really been sincere with us. He's, we've been we know each other for so long. Of course, they always accommodate us. Uh, he always accommodates us, but he cannot uh, disobey the the saying of the whole ECT. So there's no close collaborations. I know because I talk to the ECT. Some of the ECT member, some of them want to work with us, but the majority said no. So he later on he escaped me, but the secretary himself, he's a, he's okay. He always have a communication with us, and the ECT staff also have uh, present the information that we want. So that is a good thing. And I hear Doctor Paul say that the. The free broadcast by the political party during the election, we used to have that, but later on, yeah, we, we still do, but it's only for the policy inform information, and not more than 15 minutes per one political party, so that they could explain about the policy when they do the campaigning, what are they, that's all. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we won't be able to take more questions from the floor, uh, but uh, Punjara, if you would like to respond to some of the remarks, uh, including uh, Dr. Paul, uh, and then we will take a coffee break. <laughs> right, just briefly, I think most are comments that was given. So thank you so much. I agree with the membership fee that you know it cannot be high, but of course how you pay it, I have never thought about it. And it should not be uh, high at all because there are we have a lot of people who are quite poor and they want to participate uh, as part of the party. They are working in the local area on the side. So if you collect a high membership fee, it's there's a good chance that they will leave the party. Definitely, that's what all I want to say. Yes. <coughs> I agree with you, my Paul. <laughs> the amount of time that is given to political parties uh, by the media for free is not my Paul. So uh, that, I think there needs to be some changes to that. So yeah, thank you, Captain Matt. Doctor Lada, one any final remarks? Yeah, so simple, that you see that you are the mindset. Uh, in terms of finance, you should focus on transparency rather than being regulated uh, too strictly. donation from the people. It is a sign of donate, they can also provide service from the volunteer for their party. So how can we help them participate more in the politics? Another point is that I agree with no dissolution for the parties. If there is no membership or if they're not doing anything, it can be dissoluted. But you shouldn't control it and or penalize any party through dissolution. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to our uh, panelists, our speakers, uh, and for uh, uh, your uh, very engaging participation. Uh, we can all do with a cup of tea or coffee, so let's take a very uh, short break. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, uh, run beyond our uh, time for this session, but uh, we already have our speaker waiting for the second session, so let's keep it short. Maybe in 10 minutes, let's come back and start our session two, which will uh, zoom into the issue of online campaign finance, which Lena mentioned was the weakest link in political finance all across the globe. So we look forward to seeing you back again in 10 minutes. Thank you.